Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is Meson redesign using finite element method in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the Dluba software company. For instance, the Dluba website, the webinars, customer projects, etc. I will be the moderator today and I will answer your questions during the webinar together with Frank Faustich, but my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Ulrich Lex. I'm responsible for quality management of RFM together with development of the add-on glass and the add-on masonry. And today I will present the webinar. Hello, my name is Frank Faustich. I'm responsible for the quality management of our software. Yeah. Yeah, and you will help me with answering the questions, yeah. of course, but I said yeah. it at the beginning. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. You can answer, uh, ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can enter a short question here and we will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar, because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then uh, email your questions to info at lubal.com. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Ulrich. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Andreas, for your for your introduction. We can see your RFM screen at the moment. Yeah, just a moment. No. So today's webinar is about masonry. Uh, my presentation uh, is created into three parts. The first part, uh, the theory um, or basics of the used material model. Uh, the second part is the modeling of masonry structures, especially how to use it in RFM6. And the third one, the evaluation of the results. Uh, add-on masonry design. The add-on masonry design was developed completely new in RFM6. Mm, it was developed in a research project uh, in cooperation with partners from science and business. Uh, the research project was called Digitizing the De Design of Masonry Structures. The main project partners were the Institute of Structural Design at Graz University Technology, the Brick Initiative or the Association of Austrian Brick Works, the Ziviltechniker Bureau Dr. Pech in Austria, the Werkram Engineers in Vienna and the company Wienerberger. The aim of the development was to find a method to make the masonry material more attractive and, and e effective in use and to create the possibility of being able to use the material in a modern software environment. Uh, topics like BIM, building information modeling and there is an exchange of models uh, or, or systems between an architect and um, special planners or the creation of, the, of, of capacity curves for the whole building to estimate earthquake resistance played an important role there. Now it is also possible to, com to compute, um, I will call it mixed structures for example, for concrete and masonry in one 3D model. After detailed investigation of various published material models, 
we decided to use an approach according to Lorenko. This theory includes three yield surfaces called Rankine Hill surfaces with which the material is scribed. There would be many different uh, or more different approaches available. For example, with more yield surfaces, that would mean uh, that the material behavior would be described uh, in much more detail, but there would be also disadvantages in implementation or uh, in stability of the calculation. The comparative calculations showed us that the results are very good with our chosen material model. How do it works? When the material is entered, a stress strain curve is generated from it. In the calculation, the solver will use this stress strain curve to solve the system. Due to the autotropic behavior, a separate curve is generated for each direction. The material parameters. The material masonry is not an easy one. It's a composition between stones and mortar, or even, uh, even glue. The difficult now is to describe this masonry material in such a way that realistic load bearing behavior is reflected. We did a lot of test evaluations and comparative calculations where we optimized the curves in such a way that the load bearing behavior, what is speci specified in EC6, uh, is refle reflected to our computation. As a result, if the program computes successfully, design close to the order code is given. The program does not reflect a design ratio because this is not possible for a nonlinear calculation. But the check is fulfilled when the calculation is success successfully completed. One of the next steps is the slab wall connection. A special topic in masonry constructions is the slab wall connection. Due to the special geometry and behavior of masonry, the connection point also requires special attention. As you all know, lies the slab, the concrete slab for example, not complete on the masonry wall. There is mostly an offset and that's the reason why the material model itself cannot react completely right at this point. Uh, in principle, the cor corresponding moments are already entered into the system through the concrete, concrete slab. For example, with a bigger slab span, there is a bigger moment in the wall. If the moment cannot be transferred by the wall, then the material model responds. Our FE elements are internally divided into nine layers above the thickness. If the allowable force is exceeded in one layer, then it fails and the wall thickness decreases. And the connection will react with lower stiffness. But the problem is the offset. Uh, that's why we developed an interaction equations where the maximum possibility, possible moment in condition to the normal force is considered. This topic can now be considered with a line hinge in RFM6. That's now all for theory and I will switch to the program to continue with modeling. Uh, there will be also an, an explanation report to the research project available on our website as soon as possible. Actually, the report is uh, on last revision 
And when it's uh, when this will be finished, then we will publish it on our website. So, and now to the to the program, I prepared a, a, a simple, easy uh, structure uh, to show you uh, all the things you needed uh, to compute a system with masonry. For the first time, mm, the material or the add-on masonry can be activated on the base data. Here you can switch to, to the add-ons and activate the masonry design. <clears throat> on the third register you can choose the standard. Actually there is only uh, the Austrian standard implemented, uh, but we are continuing uh, to implement more and more standards. So you can continue with OK. Then we can create a new material. If I activated the masonry design, then I have the, uh, the possibility to choose a material type masonry. And after that, I can choose one material model. There are two different material models uh, for for masonry. The isotropic linear elastic is our standard material, ma material model. The isotropic masonry is our, um, I will call it, it old uh, material model from RFM5. Here you can, uh, you can uh, limit the stresses in x and y direction, but you have no, no influence of the shear also old autotropic behavior. This autotropic masonry plastic surface is our new developed one what we will choose. If you do this you get a new register for classifications and material. Here you, you can uh, enter the parameters of your used stone mortar com combination. Uh, if I go to the website, maybe from Wienerberger, unfortunately this is in German, but I had no English one, you can find the dimensions of a stone, you can find um, you can find the compressive strength, the stone group, and you can find which motor, motor uh, can be used. If you know these things, you can insert it here. We have, we want to choose a stone with grouping two, together with thin layered mortar, with dimensions 250, 249, 380, compressive strengths, and five. The horizontal compressive strength mm, is mostly not given, but it's about 10%. And one. Here you have the possibility to, to uh, enter a partial factor on material side. It's in our case for thin layered mortar, the two. And the last, last part you can uh, activate that the head joints are filled. Mostly you need it if you if you use uh, maybe maybe a lintel um, above an opening. So if you entered all these things, then automatically the parameters for our used material model are calculated. <clears throat> you see in the upper part uh, the E module, the difference in Y and X direction. It's, therefore it is really important to check the local directions, that the Y direction uh, is in this direction where, where the, the load is uh, acting. 
Then you have the, the compre uh, compressive strength and the tensile strength. And in the, in the part down, there are some parameters for the material model. This is one option. The second option is to use our uh, material library. You can choose it. You can set material type masonry. And there are a lot of uh, stone mortar uh, combinations. We are uh, we are developing, and we will fill this uh, database with a lot of more uh, stone mortar combinations. Here I can choose again my poro term with thin layered mortar. On the left side down, I have an info button where I can see which uh, parameters are in the database. With double click, with double click, can I choose these parameters? The parameters are filled automatically. So the same I want to do uh, for for a second stone type for my inner walls and I will continue with OK. <clears throat> so if I have defined my material, I can define the thickness as it is common in RFM6. I create a new thickness, choose my material and enter the thickness of the wall. Please be careful, uh, the thickness of the stones is not automatically the thickness of the wall because it's possible for, for small format stones that it, it is different. That's why it's not connected automatically. And I will create a second one for my inner inner walls and continue with OK. So what I did before too, I created uh, some object selections, one for the outer wall and one for the inner wall. This is easy possible if I if I mark something or if I mark the, the wanted objects, click on the right and create a new object selection. Now I will assign my thickness for the outer walls and click OK. Here I will check also my local axis so that my y direction is in the load acting direction. And what I did too is to orientate the z direction uh, inside the building. That is not a must, but uh, it helps me later to read the results correctly. Okay, as a second part, I will assign some material for my inner walls. Okay. Now I have created some masonry structure. What have I do as next? Uh, I have a lot of uh, openings in the building. Uh, because of the material, it is important to take a look at these openings. Uh, the material has a very low uh, uh, tensile strength. So it could be that this part over uh, the upper part from the openings 
maybe uh, how should they call it it falls out so it's necessary um, to assign there a member this will I do as a next step I create a new member maybe with an with 300 and only 55 millimeters in the high and choose all lines from opening Okay, for the bigger opening openings, I will create an, a second member, maybe with 300 and high 200. Okay. If the openings are not too big, um, it's okay that we that we connect the member with the surface on one FE node. Uh, if the the opening is is bigger, um, then it's maybe necessary that you that you bring your member uh, your member in the surface, maybe ten centimeters like it is in reality so that not all the load have to act in acting on one fe node mm. but in this case it's, it's, it, it is okay as it is okay as a next part mm, i have to look for the wall slab connection mm, the wall slab connection as i said can we assign as a line hinge. That's why I create a new line hinge. If you are in the dialog uh, line hinges, you see you have the option slap ball connection. If you check it on, you will see um, that this is not a real hinge. It's only a, a placeholder for the hinges in the masonry wall. This placeholder or this hinge is located on the slab and there on all lines, on all outer lines. The same I will do for the slab above and choose all outer lines. Okay. Then I can switch to the slab wall connection register and to enter an offset. This offset describes uh, how 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 big or how how long how, how long it is. A second option is uh, to enter a block width. When I entered uh, here in value. Then you can see what is, is the meaning of it. It's an additional stone on the outside of the wall. But in our case, I will not do it. Okay, if I have uh, now described the geometry of my connection, I can generate the new line hinges. If I click on this button, I generate two new line hinges the amount of these hinges is not uh, is not necessary because it is depending how the location of the local set axis of the surface and the orientation of the line is these hinges are uh, in a different color that means they are not editor edit, edit able to edit 
because they are connected to this geometry. Of course, you can disconnect it, but then you cannot. Uh, you have not the intelligence if I if you change something on the first one. There are uh, generated two line hinges, but you will see that the, um, that the hinges are the same. Only it's located in a different quadrant. So if I click OK, then we can see that we generated two new uh, hinges. This one is our placeholder, and here and here on the on the masonry wall, we have our our hinge for the connection. So here a short I will show you uh, I will show you some some details. If you have uh, two surfaces on us on this lab you you saw it already it's no problem. You can uh, easily generate generate the hinges for uh, on on the on the masonry wall. Uh, it doesn't matter if the, the thickness of the wall uh, is the same or different. So there will be generated the correct hinges. In cases that you have uh, different materials, you can also use this slip wall connection. Now, if you uh, generate it, you get an, a warning message of an invalid material. But if you click OK, you will see the invalid material is a concrete material, and this is OK because there should no hinge be generated. And on the masonry wall, the correct hinge is generated. You have to be a little bit carefully in such cases. Uh, it is modeled in this way that here are double lines. This, this is not good. You can find it also uh, with uh, tools, mm, model check, overlapping lines. Mm. But this is not good uh, in, in for, for the modeling because if you generate here, the slab wall hinge, you see that only on one uh, 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 on one wall the hinge is generated. So it's even better if you if you connect or if you if you model it in this way that you have only one line. And then the, the generation is okay. So now back to our to our house. Okay. The line hinges are generated. So the next step I can I can do is to show to generate the FE mesh. The FE mesh settings, um, well, it, it's recommend to to use the FE mesh from 25 or 20 centimeters for a masonry wall. And it's it's because of, of the, the material data, there we can say are the best results. For concrete, of course, you can you can use a bigger FE element, and for the masonry, of course, if you need it, you can also use smaller elements. But I would not use bigger elements uh, because of the nonlinear material. It is also important to generate, I would say, a nice mesh. Uh, or a regular mesh. 
because otherwise you will get some singularities um, what are not a problem of the, of the system, what are then only a problem of the mesh. So in my case, uh, the mesh is looking, look like, looks very good. So I can continue with the next step. The next step would be the loading. I have prepared uh, simply three load cases. Mm. What I want to, to explain is a little bit the, the settings. Mm. So the static analyze settings, you have the option to choose an uh, analyze type. It's possible to compute the masonry with geometric linear or large deformation analyze type. Mm. For, I would say, easy systems, it's enough to use the geometric linear system. If there is a big bending or if you if you want to 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 use uh, or to, to come on the borders of the the material behavior, it's it's necessary to use the large deformation. For the nonlinear material, it's also necessary to use a number of load increments that you not only only computed with one load increment. It's because uh, because of that the, the material or the FE element has has the chance um, to to uh, yeah load it in a slow way. Uh, so if elements, so you you have to choose maybe a good number would be five or ten. Here you can save the results for all increments. Then you can see afterwards what is happening in calculation. Okay, if you have done this settings. Then you can compute. Then, then you can compute uh, the system. I prepared it for you and want to show uh, want to show you the results. For the results, you have uh, all results available as they are in uh, in RFM. The first thing is the overview of the st static analyze. Mm, here you can see that the computation mm, was successfully uh, without any error. So the masonry itself is okay. It's always necessary to, to check the deformations. There you can find maybe input input errors or something else especially for for the masonry material you can check uh, then the stresses but the stresses cannot be higher as they are defined in the material model so it's maybe more interesting uh, to take a look on the strains Especially for for this system now, um, all the all the specialists of masonry will know it. Uh, it's the slab. Uh, so it's the first slab, and here we will will take a look on the strains. If you take a look at this this edge, then you will see. Set the strains. Set the strains on, on the outside in y direction are tensile strains. Uh, that means maybe there is a crack in uh, in the masonry. Uh, 
in the beginning I checked uh, the, the plus and minus side and when we remember the plus side is inside the building and the minus side is outside. Now I can uh, can take a look on the inside strains and see there is also a tensile uh, strain. That means my, cr my crack will be above the whole thickness. Mm. This can be avoided if you if you if you add a member or an attica. Uh, on, on the slab but with these things you can you can uh, you, you can uh, you can take a look and and to see if there is any any crack in the masonry one more thing is also the criteria here you can see um, the non-linearity rate of the material, the red, the red one, or the red marked elements are not uh, overloaded. It's it is saying that this one, uh, what are blue, are on the linear elastic part of the material model and the red ones are in the in the plastic part mm. here you can you can uh, you get a feeling what happens in the in the building and where the problems maybe are these all things you can you can document uh, you can document in the printout report um, to document uh, all the results. So, and as a last part, um, I have prepared um, some more example. It's our it's our small building, and there I want to I want to create a capacity curve. Maybe to to get a feeling uh, for the resistance of, of an earthquake. So how can I do it? For this, I have to to activate at first the add-on stability structure stability. Mm. The other things are, are the same as we did it before and I created a new a new load case. I have uh, my normal vertical load cases and I created one load case um, for horizontal loads. This horizontal load case is only is only a, a unit load. And I will in, increase this horizontal load until uh, until the, the system is in collapse. How can I do this? I can create uh, two load combinations. One load combination with my vertical loads, and the second combination with an ad additional uh, horizontal load. Now I can say, okay my vertical loads are in initial, initial state that means that I will not increase these loads after that I can activate structure stability add-on and say okay I want to to increase my loading with incremental method activate this here you have to save the results And can this you can this uh, assign to this low, uh, combination twenty in the static analyzing settings? You have the possibility to activate calculation diagrams. For this calculation diagrams, you have the option 
uh, to choose match things you want to see. In our case, I want to see the sum of support forces in x direction in correlation with the node deformation in x. You have to choose one node. And with these settings, you can start the calculation. So if you finish the calculation, you can see that I can increase my, hor uh, my horizontal load about 60 times and after that my system will fall down. <clears throat> um, in the criteria you can see now um, also the, 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 shear, the shear forces what are in the system. And as a last last part, you can you can uh, take a look on the capacity curve. You can take a look on this calculation diagram, and this is the capacity curve for this building. And here you can see the linear elastic part on the beginning, and if you increase the loading more and more, you will come in the plastic plastic part. The loading will not be much higher, but the deformation uh, will increasing. And this curve you can use uh, maybe maybe for, uh, for some other calculations. Okay, mm. now I'm uh, on the end of my presentation, mm, I would say thank you for listening and go back to Andreas. Okay, thank you Oli for this nice presentation. Just for information, we recorded this webinar and yeah, before I will show you where you can find the recording and the use models uh, to download, I would like to introduce you some new uh, or free tools that we provide. Just a moment, I take over the screen again. So, yeah, our free online services e.g. the GeoZone tool for snow, wind and seismic loads. Then the cross-section properties, yeah, it's a large database with cross-sections and you can define your own parameterized uh, cross-sections. Then the FRQs and knowledge database the models to download, you know, also with the webinar models. Then on our YouTube channel, you will find the webinars and other useful videos, tutorial videos, etc. Our webshop is with prizes and you can download the tri licenses of RFM, RSTAB, our wind and so on. RFM and RSTAB uh, contain the yeah, full, it's, uh, full, those are full uh, versions with all add-ons. Maybe I will show you the home page, okay. You will find the free full trial version here. RFM, RSTAB, our wind, our section, etc. And you can use the RFM trial for example for 90 days also with the add-on masonry design. Okay if you want to find the recording under news and events and webinars you will find the today's webinar here. Yeah and in the next days you will find the recording here the presentation slides are already there and also the two 
used models. Okay, that's also all from my side. I say thank you for your attention. Thanks to Ulrich Lex for the nice presentation. Thanks to Frank Faustig for answering the questions. I wish all a nice rest of the day. Okay, and yeah, bye-bye. <laughs>